Give up. Come on, come on. I want you to clap very, very hard. Give it up for Shabri Kosandi! Good evening, everyone. Switzerland. Beautiful, clean country. Very well done. It's so lovely here. And um, I'm so excited to come back. I brought my children with me. Um, they're in the car. I love your country. And you know, your flag is kind of similar to the English flag, but with different colours. And just sort of a bit sort of more sexy. Now, the, I want to talk about the English flag very quickly. Because in England, it was kind of hijacked by the racists. England! Those sort of people rather than England. Those ones. And actually, I think it's time to reclaim the English flag for everybody. Because I think as flags go, it's a brilliant one. England was at the front of the queue when it came to choosing flags. What would you like, England? White, red stripe. Job done, isn't it? Perfect. And then you guys were there. I think Wales was at the very back of the queue. Oh, they've run out of crosses, day. Fuck it, we'll have a dragon. So I was born in Iran and I went to England um, as, a, as a child refugee. That was 40 years ago, 40 years. That's longer than the age that I pretend to be. And what I found is over the years, well-meaning British people always say to me, oh, you're British, well done you, you're British. And I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for the opportunity, thank you. But, England is a country. Britain's an economic union. Can't I be English? They don't like that. They go, well, it's fine for you to be British because frankly, on the phone, we'd never know. But you can't be English, why not? Why not? Why not? Because you weren't born here. I can't be English because I wasn't born there. Na, 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 na. Neither was tea. Tea came from India. We drink it from China cups. The only thing English about tea is the milk we put in it to make it whiter. <laughs> that divides an audience at home. But people said to me, you can't be English, you're not genetically English. There's no such thing. That's not how science works. There is no gene that you can isolate by putting a microscope on it and seeing it go, oh, do you mind? <laughs> We're in the middle of our supper. I felt a bit strange being described as a UK comedian, the United Kingdom. We're not very united at the moment. Can we talk about Brexit? Do you care? You're Switzerland, you couldn't give a fuck. Give me a cheer. <laughs> give me a cheer if you are English, if you're British. Ah! Leave or remain? Hello, of course you'll remain, you live here. But, <laughs> but it's such a tricky thing. 48% of us voted to leave. 52% of us voted to remain, so we are not very united at the moment. So ladies and gentlemen, I am from Kingdom. Thank you very much. I'm currently from Kingdom only. And I found it really stressful, the whole thing, because I like some of the people who voted leave. It's like, I dislike half the people of the country aren't stupid. They're just misguided and selfish. No, let it go. But, <laughs> but my neighbour, who I adore, he's a lovely man, but he gets all frothy at the mouth about immigration and like I say he likes me because he's like oh you're different but he'll always chat to me and then he'll get more and more aggressive about immigrants end of the day Shappy if they come over here they've got to learn our values or we should throw them and their kids back in the sea then I feel duty bound to pipe up I go well what are British values and he'll go fairness tolerance inclusion <laughs> But a, a quick look, a quick look on 
social media shows you that native Britons don't share a value system, right? I looked on Twitter, found two very Anglo-Saxon names, and one of them was at Abigail underscore Katsamagic. And her profile read, proud vegan, lover of sunshine, teller of stories. And her status update was, if you, were, if you use the words crazy flippantly, you are undermining the seriousness of mental health issues, hashtag words hurt. <laughs> Underneath, her first reply was from at Ahoy 1985 who said, fuck off you mental bitch. I hope your cat dies, hashtag banter. Now, my two children, I believe, are a perfect example of how you can be raised in the same country by the same mother, different fathers. Don't judge me. I have, I'm not even with either of the fathers. I just, do you know why? I've got two kids with two different dads and, and I'm not with them because I find ending relationships really traumatic. So I find just having a baby neatly, cleanly, politely severs unwanted ties. So, and the big difference between them is my son has a close, loving relationship with his father. My daughter's uh, never met her biological father. When I was pregnant, he said to me, you have to choose between me or the baby. And I chose the baby because his accent was so posh that I thought, oh, when I'm hungover, that's going to great. So I did the best I could for my lifestyle and had the child. Um, I'm glad I'm not pregnant anymore because when you're pregnant, you can't drink in public. Um, so... <laughs> Because of my background as well, I'll tell you this quickly. I, I, as a, being a refugee, of course, I get very involved in refugee charities. And I went with a charity to uh, uh, the Calais refugee camp. I have to clarify, well, I went there with a charity because some people think it was an like, ill-fated booze cruise. And amongst the group of people I went with was the Hollywood movie star Jude Law, right? Now, I'm not saying that Jude Law is unfriendly. But I will tell you that he was a lot more friendly towards me until someone took him aside and quietly told him that I wasn't one of the refugees. <laughs> Apparently, he'd gone around saying to everyone, you must talk to that Afghan lady. Her English is really very good. So my children, they're raised in the same country, by the same mother, but they are so wildly different to one another, they might as well be different nationalities. My son is a little English gentleman. My daughter is a mad Middle Eastern woman who moved in with us. We're not even sure where from. She just turned up with suitcases full of ground pistachio nuts, chopped coriander, ready to be freeze dried. Now, my son's sense of humor is very English in that he pushes down his emotions and just uses cold wit to get out of a bind. We were driving to Scotland, and I said to him, Darling, did you know that in Scotland they're gonna ban smacking children? And he went, are they? Well, do you wanna get a couple of slaps in now before we cross the border? <laughs> and I am, I'm a grumpy mum. I'm a grumpy mum because when I work at night, I need them to get the fuck to bed with no fuss, and I'll growl, I was growling here. And I said, are you going to brush your teeth? And he went, I've got no idea. I'm not a soothsayer no time for this, right? So I said, oh, don't be such a smart ass." And he did something that I believe is very, very British and we need to fight to preserve it. He said the first funny thing that came into his head, even though he knew it might get him killed. He said, smart ass, mummy, your ass is smarter, yours can speak. <laughs> In my house, we have a rule, if it's funny enough, mummy let you live. I'll say to my little girl, darling, should we go upstairs and brush your teeth? You don't tell me what to do. You are not the boss of me, mummy, if that is your real name. I hate you. I love you. Go away. Don't leave me. I rip out my heart for you. It means nothing. I tear out my eyeballs as a sacrifice to you, but all you say to me is teeth, teeth, teeth. Why, why? My boy, 
he goes to visit his dad's family, his, his grandparents, and every time he comes back from his English grandparents' family um, weekend there, he's always a little bit more English than when he left. And he came back recently and he goes, Mummy, can we get some potted beef? I had some at Nana's, I really liked it. And I said, yes, my darling, and I'm an indulgent mother, so I went to the 1940s and I, I got him some potted beef. And he's there and he's spreading it on his little triangles of white toast, quietly singing to himself. And did those feet in ancient time walk upon England's mound? And my little girl's there going, oh my God, that's meat in a can. That is dog food. It's putting me off my sheep's head. <laughs> you have been an utter delight. Thank you so very much. Give it up for Sharpie called Sandy!